We were asking you guys all August, where's the pass rush come, coming from? Where's it coming from? And so how does it feel, you know, a little bit of a month into the season to be maybe the best pass rush team in, in the country? Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, I still feel like there's so much room for improvement, and we leave some, we've left so many players out this far. I mean, I really can't even like turn to look back. I, I, to be honest, I'm really just worried about what's in front. Um, I think we can honestly do a lot better, like I said. So, just getting back to work this week and just improving that. What were some specific things you did during the open week uh, to recover, get better, and things like that? Uh, really, just making sure that my body is in the place that I wanted to be. You know, I don't know. I'm feeling great, to be honest with you. So. Just maintaining at this point. And Tyler, this is going to be another game where the line of scrimmage maybe is the the, the lead element to, to how the game plays out. Just what have you seen early on from AM's offensive line? I mean, they're a, a big group. I mean, they do a really good job of playing behind their pads. Um, they pass off games well. So I think for us, it's just um, going into it with the right mindset. It's going to be a physical game. So I think we're excited for that. On the flip side of that, and the defensive line is talked about a lot. I know you'll be studying the offense, but what are your thoughts on their defensive line? It seems like they have a, a bunch of different body types, and it's right. guy after guy that can rotate in very similar to y'all. Uh, yeah, I mean, they do a great job on that side, um, but we're more so just focused on our offense right now. What else stands out about Texas A&M's offense you've been able to look at? So. Uh, they do a really good job, um, like I said, running the ball, to be honest. But uh, the quarterback does a great job of keeping his eyes down the field. So we just got to be really disciplined on all, all three levels. I think that'll be the key to it. Caleb? Do you feel like this bye week came at the right time in the season for y'all? Or had, what is your opinion on that? Uh, I mean, I, I feel like it did come at the right time. I don't know if it was the perfect time. It would be hard to say. but. Yeah, I definitely feel like um, we were coming off of a good week. Um, just got to keep the mindset right and just make sure we're attacking the preparation the right way. John. Uh, a few more games for you here at Keneland. You got Checker Keneland this Saturday. Um, just what does it mean to kind of, I guess, leave on a, on a good note in these last few games that, that you had in your career in Knoxville? Uh, I mean, it means everything. <laughs> I try not to even really think about the end of it, to be honest. But just know that we'll be out there playing as hard as we can play. Patrick. Uh, I think Coach Garner said this a couple weeks ago, too, and you kind of touched on it. You guys are always kind of focusing on the place you, you don't right. Has that always been his thing? And how different is that that you guys are not really focusing on the place you do make, but the ones that, that you may be left on the field? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's been Coach G's message. Just, um, if you turn and celebrate the small wins, then you'll miss the big ones. So we just try to just, like you said, focus on the things that we miss because the ones you make, those are those are natural. Um, so focus on the little things, what we can do better, because I think that's where you really become elite. How challenging can it be to play a position where even like the best of the best, like, you know, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's low. The times that you pass rush and you actually get a sack, get the quarterback on the ground, maybe it's something like baseball with batting average. Right. I mean, how do, you, how do you deal with that sort of on a daily basis at this point? Uh, I mean, <laughs> to be honest with you, every play I approach it thinking I'm going to make the play. So I think that's just our mindset. Um, we, we always think we can make the play, and if it's not made, we think it's something on our part that we did wrong. So I think it's just being really, really critical with yourself and just basically getting out of it what you want. Statistically, these defenses going up against each other this next week are very similar. What would you say is the biggest difference between your two defenses? Um, I really haven't done much with their defense, but just being prideful on ourselves, I feel like nobody's going to play as hard as we play. Nobody's going to get to the ball like we get to the ball. So um, I can just speak for us and just how hard we play. I'm not really sure on the other side. You guys uh, defensively have been among the leaders in the country, sacks, tackles for loss, all those things most of the season. Is it important to you that, that teams look at you guys as an elite pass rushing team? Does that matter at all that you get that respect? Uh, I mean, it's not necessarily a, I don't really care what other people think, but just in terms of us, I think if we can look at ourselves and say that about ourselves and we live in the right way and we're doing the right things. So I think it's more of a standard that we hold ourselves to. We're not really overly impressed with what other people think about us. Last one, Vince. Tyler, what kind of presence have the guys that have missed time, like Keenan Peely right. and then now Brew McCoy, being around the team and trying to still help you guys out? Uh, just speaking in terms of those two guys, I mean, 
when you think about the guys you want in your program, I mean, those are two of the most model citizens in terms of how they live and how they approach the game. So I think even not their, they're not making an impact on the field necessarily, but just off the field, just the young guys, just looking at them, seeing how they live, seeing how yeah, they still want to be a part of the team and how they pour into us as teammates. I mean, I think it's priceless, honestly, just having those leaders, because maybe not necessarily taking it out from how somebody's playing on the field, but just that other person that can be in your ear telling you how to live, showing you the right way to do it just throughout he's living his day. I think both of those guys are two of the best that you've got. Thanks, Doc. Jacob, just what would it love for you? You and I guess your position against South Carolina seem like you all were more involved in the passing game that particular year. Yeah, um, you know, just a lot of those opportunities that I feel like are there pretty much every week, whether it's like scramble drills or whatever, just being ready for, for the ball, right? Being able to try to get open and uh, kind of make something out of nothing. That's kind of what I think of. Um, there's a lot of things that we just kind of get to as the game goes on to just adjustments that the coaching staff makes, um, whether they see a certain action off of a run cell or, you know, whatever it may be that we are able to get to, uh, you know, a couple of big plays for us, which, you know, is good. That's what we want. And that's kind of what we're looking forward to kind of moving through the season. Brew McCoy was sort of uh, unique in his, his skill set. You've seen Caleb and Chaz and Ron up close more than we have. What, what's their skill set? What are they really good at receiver? Um, super talented. You know, they got guys that are <clears throat> extremely athletic, that move really well, run really, really smooth routes, um, look good, just run around, catch the ball. And guys that, you know, can make big catches for us, right? They have the ability, like you see Ramel, Ramel Keaton, and kind of the big catches he makes. You saw Squirrel last week make a ginormous catch that went viral in all our sports and everything like that. So um, that room is packed full of guys like that that are just, you know, waiting to step up and, and become comfortable in that opportunity and become comfortable, you know, with that new role they're going to have to take on. Um, so it'd be cool to kind of see them and support them and back them up through all of them. Thanks. Jacob, the catches are one thing to replace from Brew, mm -hmm. but his physicality, run after catch, and those things you know are pretty unique. How do you guys try to compensate or to maybe try to make up for that and who needs to step up in that room? Um, obviously, the first person I would say is myself, right? And, and uh, the tight ends and General McAllen and whoever's in there. Um, I think that you know, his physicality is something that you, you really desire and you want on the perimeter for all of the you know, little passes that we throw out to the side, whether he's blocking. You know, I think back to the block he had for McAllen when McAllen scored that, that big long run. Um, you know, just things like that that are really special about him that like your team's going to miss, right? But I think, again, the same way that I just talked about how well, you know, Chaz and Caleb and then the run and catch, I think they, they block well too. And they, and they um, care about each other. They care about their teammates. And so that that's where you see, you know, guys selling on the perimeter, you know, blocking for their friends or blocking down the field for the quarterback, whoever it may be. Um, but yeah, we kind of just have to all develop that identity that we're going to get that plus two. You know, Brew is really good about, you know, finishing the plays, and whether it's, you know, running over a defender or just kind of running through an arm tackle. Guys are going to have to do that to make sure that these, you know, these seven yard gains turn into tens and elevens. That really helps our offense a lot. Ben and Patrick. Jacob, do you all get the sense at tight end that you'll, you'll probably get more opportunities going forward because of Brew's injury? Um, I mean, I think because Brew is Brew's injury, but also just because we've proven um, in a way that you know, if the ball comes our way, we, we make plays. And um, I think that's something that you look at and is is a positive, right, for myself, just because, <clears throat> you know, in the past, whether we have gotten a lot of touches or haven't gotten a lot of touches, we've done our job and we've done what we're asked to do the same way that everybody else in this offense does. So. Um, you know, that moment that we do start getting a number call a little bit more, then we're more than prepared to, to attack and ready for it. And there are a couple of plays I'm sure McConnell would like to have back sure. in the South Carolina game. Just yeah. where's his head been at? What have you kind of done to make sure his confidence is still up? Yeah, being able to play this game at a high level, we have to be able to snap and clear. It's what we call park it, refocus, whatever you want to say. Um, just focus on your mental game more than, than kind of what's going on physically. And McCallum's a mature guy. You know, he's obviously a six year, seen a lot of seen a lot of things, been through a lot of things. And um, the guy's tough, man, mentally tough, physically tough. And um, just super excited to see kind of, I don't really even say him bounce back, right? But just him having the game that he knows and we all know that he can. So. Jerry, well, I'm sure you and McCallum will love to catch a lot of passes and make a lot of plays in passing. You guys are also helping out the run game. You guys need to see it in rushing. From your vantage point, what, what do you think is working up front? Why are you guys been so successful around the ball? Um, communication, first of all, um, understanding kind of where we need to be, um, how we fit into the scheme, um, and then also just trust, man, from the coaches to be able to you know, do our job. Right? I think that um, it's a, it's, I won't say a big ask of the tight ends to be super involved in the run game, but you don't see 
you don't see a lot of it done really well at a really high level um, across the country. And so it's really cool to kind of be a part of a system that trusts our guys to go in there and, and, and create space and create gaps. And uh, whether it's down blocks on gaps or you know, front side of zone blocks, whatever it may be, man, it's been really cool to be trusted with that and have a coach that can really deliver the information and help us kind of reach that, that point that we want to. Um, we got an O-line coach pretty much now at the tight end position. So, um, man, we're always coached up, always schemed up, know how to you know, take the right feet, have the right hands, whatever it may be, to be really successful in there. So. Vince and John. Can you give some specific examples of Cooper Mays' impact being back in the lineup, whether it's helping Joe, whether helping the guy next to him, anything like that? Um, yes, I, I mentioned earlier just communication. Right? I think he's master communicator, does a really, really good job of, of being extremely clear in you know, what he wants, what he sees, uh, what he thinks the right call may be. Um, it's just guys, I mean, at the end of the day, just, just trusting each other. I think he's been in that position for such a long time that you know, that's, that's one thing you don't necessarily have to think about or, or worry about and whatever it may be, right? It's, it's, the snap's going to be perfect and he's going to have the right call. And if it's not right, man, who cares? Like, we're, we're rolling with him and we're just going to back him up regardless and we'll, we'll fix it later on the sideline or whatever. But um, the guy's tough, man. He, he, he's a fighter. Um, his first game back, <laughs> the first drive goes, I don't even know how many plays, whatever, like eight, ten plays. And that's not easy in this offense with our tempo and everything. But um, just the way he was able to just – just gut it up and just go out there and, and perform for us is, is really, really special. Uh, it's Eric Berry weekend initiative call it as a hometown kid. Yeah. Uh, did you grow up a big Eric Berry guy? And sure. What do you? What are some moments that stick out to you that you remember uh, growing up with him? Um, yeah, Eric Berry, obviously a legend of the game, just because of the um, the adversity that he went through, um, just with his diagnosis and everything, and just him coming back and. Never, no one really thought he would, right? No one, no one expected him to, and, and just kind of the resilience that he showed through through his struggle and um, his, his little brothers as well played here and, and all this stuff. And he was involved in, in the community and everything whenever there was some, some tragedy going on around Knoxville uh, when I was in high school. And so just a lot of respect for him, um, his game. Man, he's one of the, one of the best to do it, truth, truthfully. Um, so it's, it's cool to kind of see the highlights and stuff and just things that went on at this university are really special. I'm just happy to, to be a part of it now.